You see, sometimes we see the point A of a person and the point B of a person, but we don't see the twists, the turns, the curves, the detours, the exits, the, ra the, the, the railroads, the hindrances. We don't see all the difficulty that they had to experience in order to get to a certain outcome or a certain destination. Psychologists call it emotional intelligence or EQ. How resilient a person is, how persistent a person is person's ability to endure failure, difficulty, and delay, but yet still persevere to accomplish whatever it is that they've set out to accomplish. I don't call it EQ, I call it GQ. No pun intended. I call it GQ, I call it the grace quotient. I call it the grace intelligence. Ladies and gentlemen, God has provided grace to every man and every woman on this planet, whether they serve the Lord Jesus or not. This grace has nothing to do with eternal life. This grace has zero to do with receiving Jesus and inheriting eternal life. This grace has to deal with God's responsibility to give to a human that he created an opportunity to do something with their life. So an atheist who becomes successful in, the, in his university pursuits becomes influential over students' lives. You see, that's where the competition comes in. That's where the warfare comes. That's where the difficulties come because now this atheist professor is now influencing children to what? And young people to take a different or a divergent course with the rest of their life. We should have an experiential response to our faith, but we should also have an intellectual response to our faith. Because depending on what sector of society you're in, your experience may not matter a whole lot. You have to know which battle to fight and which battle to win. Raise your hand if you're a human. Now look around, look around, look around, look no, 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 don't pretend now, listen, we need, listen, I need to make sure everybody's hands raised, <laughs> so we can know if we need to in, 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 invoke a different kind of ministry, <laughs> and that grace is an opportunity, a gift, or a talent that you have to be marketable with it, can somebody say marketable, say marketable, now, what does marketable mean? What, what, is that really, what does marketplace ministry really, really mean? What does a market mean? Listen, at the very core of what it means, a market is a place where two people come together to exchange value. Every place that you are exchanging value with someone, you are in a market. You need them, they need you, you exchange value. In most cases, you're exchanging what time for dollars. Your time is yours, you give them what time, they give you what money in exchange for time while you fulfill a specific task. Somebody said that's a market. You know what, I may not like Mr. W's beliefs and what he stands for, but my, my goodness, he, he's the top of his class. And we need him. And I would rather keep him here rather than lose him to the competition. Because I don't want him making my competitors, what, rich. So guess what? I'm going to tolerate his Jesus because, man, he's just moving and shaking. He's just making it happen. Nobody does what he does. Does that make sense? And so what has happened is we had this thing reversed. We go into the marketplace and we start saying, Jesus. Look to the person beside you and say, you got to bring your A game every day. I'm going to leave that alone. Because I'm going to leave that alone right there. We, we, we got to move out of that. Because <laughs> we may take a shift. <laughs> You've got to bring your A. Why? Because that A game creates a place for your feet. And once you get footing, then you can what? Move the world. We try to move the world, but we have no footing. When they come to your cubicle, they don't just need to hear, hear your, your 89.7 or 91.9 or 103.6 or whatever the, the Christian station is in your area. I'm not saying don't do that. By no means am I saying not do that. But I'm saying that should not be your first means of access. Make sense? Before they see your Bible, they should see your productivity. 
Daniel, Daniel 1, Daniel, Mishael, Hananiah, and Azariah says they were 10 times better than everybody else. See, this is not Mark. I didn't create this. It's in Scripture. They were 10 times better. And they made inquisition of them. As a matter of fact, it wasn't just, let's just see how they do today. We're going to inquire of them over a period of time. And over a period of time, we find out that, you know what? Ain't nobody like these boys. Nebuchadnezzar said, you know what? They don't serve Marduk. They don't bow to our gods. They don't dance to our music. But man, I have nobody else in my realm like them. And they're not just better than, they are 10 times better. Everything that we use to make our world better as it relates to a natural resource, you've got to go mining for it and digging for it. And God made your body out of dirt. And I'm telling you, it's metaphoric, it's prophetic, it's a representation of the fact that if you're going to accomplish God's plan for your life and see everything come out of you, you've got to go mining in your dirt. He's hidden treasures in you that you've got to find. Does that make sense? When was the last time you asked someone else, what do you see in me? What gifts do you see that I have? What talent do you see that I have? What skills do you believe that I have? What do you think I can do that's marketable? See, in many cases, we live in our own world, right? And then we live with shallow people, and shallow people don't see great things. The point I'm trying to make is God needs ministers in the marketplace. He needs believers behind movie cameras. He needs believers on movie screens. He needs believers in politics and government. He needs believers running million dollar and billion dollar corporations. Come on, he needs believers leading and coaching Little League basketball. Am I, <laughs> am I making some sense here? Yes. See, no matter what scope it is, whether it's at the macro level or the micro level, God needs ministers. But their whole world changed in one afternoon. How do you think Peter and his boys could leave their business and be with Jesus full time and still take care of their families? It's amazing how we read the Bible, but we don't read the Bible. The Bible tells us that Peter had a wife, he had children, and he had a mother-in-law living with him. That means it costs us money and we got your mama staying here. <laughs> Am I still in the Bible? Because she had a headache upstairs, right? Jesus, can you please take care of the headache? Did that come out like that? Let's move forward. <laughs> Where do you think the masses came from? It wasn't just Jesus' miracle. He said, well, y'all go out and tell them to come. Oh, that's that fisherman. They had, does that make sense? That's that politician. Well, oh, that's that engineer. That's that entrepreneur. That's that forklift driver. That's, does that make sense? Once you have a place to plant your feet, people will begin to listen to you.